one of uh, President Trump's supporters here. Greatest movement in the history of our country. And the Democrat Party is actually working against religion, against freedom, and, and, and shutting down churches. I see the Holy Spirit, the evidence of the Holy Spirit, working in the, in the president when he takes the kind of actions he does. We want justice for George Floyd and his family. Everybody agrees on that. But this utter destruction and violence is not the way to do that. And President Trump brought this back again to the country. With Joe Biden, he hasn't even condemned Antifa. Just think about that for one minute. He hasn't condemned the rioters. Hey, if you voted for Trump, Trump, you ain't black. Yeah. You have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. I have to look at myself. And say, I'm black. <laughs> Some people say, Herschel, you're not black. I'm like, no, I am black. HBCUs and the things that the president has done to invest and to support the black community, that's how we grow out of this. Keep finding the police is insane. The police are what protect us all from anarchy. We are one people. One family and one glorious nation under God. We will make America great again. Welcome to Team Trump Online. Wednesday just got better because the ladies are live discussing the hottest topics of the week with you tonight. And we will make America great again. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to The Right View. I'm Laura Trump, senior advisor to President Trump's re-election campaign. And as always, we have an incredible panel of women who are working overtime for President Trump's re-election. Kimberly Guilfoyle, national chair of Trump Victory, Mercedes Schlapp, senior advisor for strategic communications, and Katrina Pearson, senior advisor to the Trump campaign. Be sure to like and share this broadcast with your friends. And please stick around following this show. We'll be highlighting American heroes who've overcome extreme difficulties since the coronavirus pandemic. All right, let's get started. Welcome, ladies. Great to be back with everybody. In recent days, the dangerous defund the police movement has shockingly gained traction throughout the Democratic Party as leading Democrats embrace the alarming idea. Time and time again, Joe Biden does not have the strength to stand up to the radical left of his party. Katrina, after nearly a week of being silent, Joe Biden simply said he doesn't support the idea. But why wouldn't he come out and actually condemn the defund the police movement? Well, Laura, either Joe Biden's silence is consent or he's just simply a coward, too afraid to tell his lunatic friends on the left just how ridiculous it sounds to other people and rein them in. But instead, the inmates are running the asylum and Joe Biden cannot lead his party back to sanity. It's quite clear now. Uh, and it's an issue that is so blatantly obvious to everyone else. I mean, defunding the police? At yeah. first I thought it was just a hashtag. Yeah. This is by far, you know, a, a crazy idea when you have a unanimous vote by the Minneapolis City Council. And then I realized, oh wait, this is an actual thing and Joe Biden didn't say anything. This is the crazy inside the Democrat party. Imagine what we would live in in Biden's America with open mm -hmm. borders, no police, and corn pop on the radio. No <laughs> thanks, Joe. <laughs> corn pop. Well, you, but you bring up a good point, Kimberly. It, it yeah. really seems, I think, to a lot of people, like Joe Biden is so afraid of what the radical base of the Democrat party will do to him that he's scared to do anything. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, no kidding, right? I'm still trying to shake corn pop out of my head, but sadly at this <laughs> it's point- It's good, uh, it's tasty. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the dessert is much better, put it that way. Okay, sadly, uh, you know, at this point, Joe Biden's position on any of these issues is, you know, whatever the words, his teleprompter is like firing at him, rapid firing at him. So he's really being controlled by the leftist staffers who are donating to rioters, while we've seen minority communities and minority businesses literally and 
and American dreams burn to the ground. That's true. And this is what breaks and rips my heart. Who is this guy? What does he stand for? And he's really nothing more than a shadow president at this point if he were to get elected because everybody else is pulling the strings. Yeah. So can you imagine any of this? You know, and instead of calling for unity or for justice or for healing, Joe Biden staffers are literally financing violence and bailing out criminals. My God, think about that. And most cities didn't even arrest looters for days. So I can only imagine those that got arrested, how egregious their actual behavior must have been to actually be taken into custody. So they're bailing out the worst of the worst. When you see Donald Trump, myself, all of us here in this program, we believe in this country, we believe in the rule of law and in America, which has led the world for decades in fighting injustice and ensuring every person is treated equally. You know, and I spent years of my life fighting for fair, honest justice as a prosecutor. And this is not what I'm seeing ripping apart the screens every single night and every day. And it is disappointing that there is not a single Democrat leader, none of them, not Pelosi, not Biden, not Schumer, who's willing to join with President Trump in condemning this radical defund the police movement. And it should be Joe Biden standing up on principle and standing for something. And it should be Nancy Pelosi standing up or any of them. Give me one. It should be any of the Democrat leaders, but they're choosing not to. They are bending a knee to the radical left. They're appeasing those who wish to burn down our towns, city after city across this country, and it's totally unacceptable. Yeah, well, and, and then their response when they are pressed on it is, is actually shocking. I want everybody to watch this clip of Minneapolis City Councilwoman Alondra Cano, even fake news CNN, pressed her on the absurd idea of defunding the police. Watch. Alondra, let me ask you how you explain to, to citizens of Minneapolis who would be patrolling the streets, who would be protecting them from crime. Minneapolis, uh, like many cities in the country, violent crime uh, trending downward for, for more than a decade. Uh, how do you propose to replace the police presence on the street? It would be wrong for me to come in with a top-down answer for that. I think that what we're showing right now is the fact that our community is going to recreate that safety system with us by centering trust, by centering justice and healing. And so it's important for uh, everybody to keep in mind that we cannot create a new system without our community. We cannot do it before they are ready for it. As you know, we began the process of ending our current system. That doesn't mean there isn't a police department no. today. That doesn't mean we're abolishing help. That means we're putting ourselves on a path to come up with the answers together. But wait, how is it wrong if you're if you're going to eliminate the police force not to have a plan to replace it? Why, why is that not a reasonable question for for citizens of Minneapolis to, to, to ask? Oh, I never said it wasn't a right question. I said that citizens and uh, council members do have a plan, and the plan is we're going to start a deep process of truth and reconciliation to come up with a new system. Wow. <laughs> well, that even shocked CNN. They they even couldn't believe how ridiculous the idea. Mercy, we know that defunding the police would, without a doubt, cause chaos. And it would absolutely endanger Americans who rely on their local police force to keep people safe, including thousands of women who call 911 when faced with domestic violence situations. What is your reaction to the councilwoman's comments? Well, I don't know about you all, but I could hear the song Kumbaya coming on in the background there. So I, I think it is very problematic when she herself cannot define what a plan looks like, con a concrete plan in terms of how they would disband the police department and in whatever way make it into just a very different type of reimagining what public safety would look like. I heard the I word healing you, in there, but it, it I don't know what that is. It was truth and reconciliation. I, I have to tell you, if I were a Minneapolis resident, I would be panicked. You know, for those women, single women who are trying to protect their families, they don't know who to call. They don't know who's going to show up. They're even talking about, well, maybe we don't send armed officers to, uh, to, to go to a house if there is a break in. It is dangerous what these Democrats are proposing. It is radical. It is part of anarchy. And it is about creating chaos on our streets. And I just think it's incredibly problematic for these Democrats embracing these movements. It goes beyond the Minneapolis City Council. This is 
And what this is Mayor Bill de Blasio uh, mm -hmm. saying he's going to shift resources away from NYPD. Those men who have been attacked by the violent rioters, you know, we've seen officers die during these these riots. And it's so tragic to know that they, the Democrats, including Joe Biden, because at the end of the day, he, he owns this movement because it is his party that he is embracing this and not standing by law and order, unlike President Trump, who has said time and time again that he is the president of law and order and will ensure that he stands with our law enforcement to keep our communities safe. Yeah. Well, on Monday, while on The View, vice presidential contender Kamala Harris refused to answer a yes or no question on whether or not she supports defunding the police. Let's play the clip. Are you for defunding the police? How are you defining defund the police? Well, I'm not for anything remotely for that. So I would ask the protesters but, the same but, thing. But I assume it's I assume. And again, this is something that is new to me. I assume it's removing police. And as um, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar said, bringing in a whole new way of, of governing and a law and order into into a community. And my understanding, again, this is something that has just come into my understanding recently, is that you, you would not have police officers like this Minneapolis City Councilwoman said that I would be a place of privilege if someone broke into my home and I wanted to call the police. So, again, we need to reimagine how we are achieving public safety in America. All right, Kimberly, Kamala Harris was unwilling to answer yes or no to a very basic question. She even said she applauds Mayor Eric Garcetti for defunding the Los Angeles Police Department. Does she really think that repeatedly using words like reimagining is a solution here. Yeah, this isn't a Disney special, okay? We're not like filming Princess Diaries. Wake up and don't be so ridiculous as it comes and relates to public safety. This just shows she's such a sellout because she's auditioning to be VP. And this is what I know. Last week, the first week of June, homicides went up 250% and victim shot went up 56%. And as a former prosecutor, I actually worked in Los Angeles District Attorney in every single county there. I know that when the police are forced to retreat and the criminals run rampant, it's sickening to watch what happens to such a beautiful and great state. Cities, communities, neighborhoods torn apart. Kids cannot go outside. The state where I was born literally will be overrun and has been by failed liberal policies making Americans left safe. And Kamala Harris has been weak on crime her entire career. She's just been a placeholder in the offices that she's held because she hasn't been serious about public safety and putting violent criminals behind bars. She wants to reimagine the police and public safety. Well, that's exactly what she did as a prosecutor, what she would want to do again were she to be Biden's VP choice. OK, so she inflated her office's conviction rate by offering plea deals to defendants accused of serious and violent crimes. Why is that? Because Kamala Harris has always cared more about advancing her own political career instead of doing her job. And that's why her office underperformed time and time again. And other D.A. cities across California outperformed her every step of the way. And that's why homicide rates rose. Wow. Well, Katrina, what do you think? Might this all have something to do with Kamala Harris's horrific record as a prosecutor? Well, yeah, but, you know, I'd like to reimagine 2020 with normal people right now, because we could be talking about policies that help people in the country. But instead, we're talking about defunding the police, this type of nonsense. And Kamala Harris had a nickname, Laura, during her presidential bid, and it was also likely the nickname on why she could not gain traction, because her name was Kamala the Cop. And they tried to blame some racist white men when this, this came out, but it was Black Twitter, guys. Black Twitter sounded off and was holding her accountable, to Kimberly's point, to all of her crappy policies in her career. Now, she had this horrible anti truancy policy. She failed, literally failed, to hold police and prosecutors accountable for their own misconduct. And she even referred to herself as California's top cop in 2016, just two years after Ferguson. So in today's cancel culture, Cops, the TV show was canceled right along with Kamala Harris's hopes of becoming his vice presidential pick. Mercy, the Daily Caller contacted every Senate Democrat, everyone, asking them if they would support defunding the police, and not a single one 
responded. I can't think of, of a more ridiculous situation, but that is where we are in this country. What is going on with the Democrat Party? Can I just say one thing on Kamala real quick? I would love like, to hear can it. We just, can we just defund Kamala? I mean, maybe that's <laughs> what we need to do. Just defund her. I mean, now that's, that's the phrase we're using now. Defund. Great. <laughs> no, so to your question, Laura, there is no question that for the Democrats, it's all about they overreach. They overreach all the time. That is why the mainstream Americans, everyday Americans cannot connect to the Democrat Party. Because at the end of the day, they are so willing to live in this safe space where they're so concerned about uh, their image, you know, they're so concerned about the violent rioters, uh, what's happening on the streets, but yet they don't stand up for condemning attacks on police like the captain who died on, yeah. in the line of duty, David Dorn in St. Louis. You know, the, the police officer who died in New York City. It, it's so tragic to me that it is about trying to divide our nation and put us into groups based on our, 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 our gender or on our race. Instead of saying, what are we as Americans? What do we stand for? What we stand for is for freedom. What we stand for is for racial reconciliation. What we stand for is that we love this country so much. We want every yeah. American to have great opportunities. And that's what President Trump has focused on, uplifting all Americans, the black community, the Latino community, women, veterans, you name it. For the Democrats, they're so worried about uh, being so politically correct that I think what they've done is they've overreached, they've gone too far in pushing defund the police. And what you have is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, by the way, a Biden advisor, Congresswoman Omar and the squad pushing defund the police. And if I know something about the squad, they know how to push all the Democrats to the left to, right. to support their radical policies. And it's what Joe Biden is gonna end up doing. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we will stay tuned for that. All right, folks, be sure to like and share this broadcast with your friends because we'd love to have more people join us. We have to take a quick commercial break. Stay right with us. During the coronavirus pandemic, Joe Biden criticized President Trump's China travel ban. Hysterical xenophobia. He was dead wrong. For 40 years, Biden's been wrong on China, supporting trade deals that destroy American jobs, giving China most favored nation status, letting China walk all over us. The beautiful history we wrote together. But Biden has never been more wrong than now. Hysterical. Joe Biden in the White House would be a deadly mistake. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Welcome back to The Right View. I'm Kimberly Guilfoyle, and we just heard about Joe Biden and the Democrats failing to condemn and instead actually embrace the defund the police movement. Well, thankfully, President Trump stands proudly with American law enforcement. Under President Trump's leadership, the greatest economic comeback in American history has begun. The economy added back 2.5 million jobs in May, the largest one-month job gain in U.S. history. Experts predict over 7 million would lose their jobs, and instead, 2.5 million jobs got added instead. Think about that. They got it wrong by 10 million jobs. Do the math, huh? How can we trust these experts? I guess we can't. Now, Mercy, how are President Trump's policies bringing this American economy roaring back? Well, let's remember, it was because of President Trump's economic policies that he built such a resilient economy that even going through what we went through, an artificial interruption of the, with the coronavirus, we've been able to stand back on our feet. I mean, it is truly remarkable. It shocked the media. It shocked the Democrats. I think Joe Biden had to run back to the basement and rewrite his speech and come out afterwards because he thought the economic numbers were gonna be so bad. But the reality is, it is because of the three years of the presidency under Donald Trump, where he focused in on 
getting rid of job killing regulations, uh, ensuring that we would pass a significant tax cut and tax reform package so that corporations where with a lower tax bracket then can ensure that they're investing here in the United States for American workers, as well as decreasing taxes for the middle class, ensuring that there would be a tax cut. So more money would be in the, the, in the pockets of these families. In addition to that, the trade deals are remarkable. Okay, let's remember, decades and decades, our trade deals were stale. No one did anything with them. What did President Trump do? He said, no, no, we need to ensure that it's not about the status quo. It is about fair, free, and reciprocal trade deals. And mm -hmm. that's what the president focused in on. It's why he was able to renegotiate uh, NAFTA, the USMCA deal, which has been very beneficial to our farmers, to our automobile workers, and as well as uh, uh, the phase one China deal, which mm -hmm. China being our bad actor, and as we know, Joe Biden has a very cozy relationship with China and said that, no, we don't have to worry about China being our competitor. Well, guess what? President Trump said, through this trade deal, we're gonna make sure that they're buying our agricultural goods, that they're not stealing our technology, and that we ensure that our American worker is getting what they need. They're getting the wages increased. And so that is why I think when this economic report came out, there was shock in the media and with the Democrats, but President Trump knew that it is because of his economic policies that we've been able to come back. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, so-called economic experts, like they like to call themselves, and the mainstream media were predicting the American economy would lose 8.5 million jobs. So, Laura, why do the pundits and the experts continue betting against President Trump and they're losing the House in Vegas, if you get what I'm saying? Like, they get it wrong every time. Well, they've gotten it wrong every time, to your point. You remember that we heard right after Donald Trump was elected, well, the economy is going to crash. This is going to be a disaster for our country. And then we saw the historic numbers under this president. We saw the historic numbers in the stock market, the record highs, the historically low unemployment numbers. They've always gotten it wrong with this president. And to your point, they were off by 10 million here. They, I mean, they really got it wrong. The reality is they are not used to somebody who gets it and who understands how the economy works. Donald Trump has always said from the very beginning, I will be the jobs president. I will bring back the economy of the United States. Mm -hmm. And he does it every single day. Mercy just pointed out all the great things and the reasons why our economy has been roaring for three years under President Trump and why we're going to see now it tick back up very, very quickly. We talked about the, the, uh, the experts now in the White House, the real experts, have talked about the fact that it's not just going to be a slow curve back up. It's going to be like a V. And we're already seeing that happen. So I can't wait. I think June is going to be really exciting. So buckle in, Democrats. There's more to come when it comes to President Trump and the economy. Oh, my God. You are absolutely <laughs> right. And I, I cannot wait. There's be like, you know, silent screaming inside. OK, so the economic numbers were such a shock to Joe Biden, I mean, pretty much everything is, that he had to delay his scheduled economic speech because, uh-oh, what was he going to do in response to the release? Now, Biden was clearly very excited to deliver a speech celebrating, right, millions of jobs lost. That's not what happened. So, Katrina, what does it say about Joe Biden that he wanted millions of Americans literally to face prolonged economic hardship instead well, you know, Kimberly, of a recovery? You know, it's, it's, it's just, it's sad because it shows that Joe Biden cares about one person, Joe yeah. Biden. And when you're willing to sacrifice the lives and take pleasure um, in those losses for your own personal gain, that's someone that should be kept far away from public service because that's what being president is. All elected officials, really, you're all supposed to be about serving the public. But there's so much complacency out there. Joe Biden knows that a lot of people will continue to vote the way that they vote. And these for-profit offices now serves him well. Um, and we see this happening in Minneapolis with the elected officials who are doing just fine. They don't live in the neighborhoods impacted by the complaints of those citizens. And one election cycle after another, nothing changes. Joe Biden knows and he is taking that chance and that risk that he can still root against America and continue to get out there and get the communities that are struggling to vote for him, even though his policies would be devastating. So why would he care? He openly said that he wanted to use this opportunity to fundamentally transform the nation with the radical left's ideological agenda. 
Meanwhile, President Trump has been an exemplary model of leadership. His family, he and his family, have made sacrifices to serve the people, putting them first and delivering those results accordingly, like the economy we're seeing coming roaring back as we speak. You're absolutely right. Amen. Now, Mercy, how would Joe Biden and Democrat policies devastate this uh, historic economic recovery that President Trump is launching? I mean, you know, all of you think about it. What's the impact of this? And I'll start with you, Mercy. Joe Biden's going to Pennsylvania to talk about safely reopening the economy. Well, let me tell you something. He is the one who has decided that he's against fracking. Mm -hmm. So in states like Pennsylvania, where there's energy jobs, you're talking about job loss. OK, the same thing when it comes to the Green New Deal, as we've talked about, it impacts the energy industry. This means impacting uh, so many of these communities across the country. So his policies are just not aligned with what you would need to help boost an economy, especially during this critical time. And he has said it before. He says he's going to roll back the tax cuts that President Trump, that President Trump uh, basically put in place. That, again, impacting middle class families. So he's all about the uh, ivory tower. Let's talk about climate change and all those things, right. as opposed to what do we need to do to find that balance between, for example, the environment and the economy and ensure that we still are able to maintain American jobs. And that does not even include the China piece of this real quickly, that he himself really likes to partner with China. So I don't want a globalist in the, in the White House. I want the person who's going to put America first, and that is President Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. That's right. Joe China and the Biden Joe family, China. the first family <laughs> I like that. of China. Beijing That's Biden, amazing. right? Yeah, Beijing China. Biden. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Uh, go, Laura, tell me what's up. What do you think? Well, here's what I want to say to everybody out there. Whether you're talking about the economy or the safety of your communities, look at the contrast between Republicans and Democrats right now. It was about a month ago that people were being locked up for going to work, for trying to go to a job. We talked about it on this show. The Thanks. woman in Texas who tried to go and open up her hair salon so that she can make some money and feed her kids got arrested and put in jail. Yet all of a sudden, like a week later, it's okay for thousands of people to mm -hmm. be out in the streets yeah. all together during mm -hmm. times of coronavirus. I thought that we were supposed to be following a certain set of rules. But the reality is it only is a rule whenever it works to advance the agenda of the Democrats. So now they flipped okay. everything on their head. They're not arresting people who are actually breaking the law, who are burning down buildings, who are looting stores, who are violently attacking our police officers out there and innocent people. It is shocking. So whenever we're talking about how bad Democrats would be, it's not just the economy. Look at what's happening right now. They want to defund the police and the law enforcement in this country. Shocking doesn't even begin to describe how I think most Americans feel when they hear that. Oh, true. So pay attention, folks. This is what they want to do across the board, across the country, if they get control. Absolutely. Like, this isn't Netflix, okay, Katrina? This is not a show we're watching <laughs> right. on TV. This is real life, and it's coming to every single city across America if they have their way. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, the mere fact that Joe Biden can't string two sentences together coherently while reading a note card is clue number one that this guy can't recover the economy because he can't even recover from a gaffe. President mm -hmm. Trump has already done what needs to be done, and he's proven to the American people that he can do it again. And I believe that Americans trust Trump when it comes to the economy. And I mean, it's not rocket science when you look at the two candidates and see 40 years versus four, with President Trump running up the scoreboard in four years with economic accomplishments, while Joe Biden is still trying to figure out which line he's supposed to stand on after 40 years, only to realize that he's not even playing on the same field. So look, the Democrats are just, they're just out there. They're not even in the same league. President totally. Trump is leading and he's delivering. And I, I think Americans are going to see that. Absolutely. They're going to love it. They're going to choose it. And they're going to vote for him on November 3rd. All right. Thank you, everyone. We're going to be back after this short commercial break. And be sure to stick around after the show to watch as we highlight American heroes that have overcome great difficulties in the last few months. We'll be right back. Stay with us. As we have already seen, his America First agenda has lifted all Americans up and have empowered them with true economic emancipation that has once again made the American dream possible. That's why I want you to text EMPOWER to 88022 
right now if you want to keep America great and deliver four more years for President Donald J. Trump. Mass incarceration has put hundreds of thousands behind bars for minor offenses. Joe Biden wrote those laws. Every major crime bill that's come out of this Congress has had the name Joe Biden on that bill. We do everything but hang people for jaywalking in this bill. Joe Biden's policies destroyed millions of black lives. Joe Biden may not remember, but we do. Welcome back. I'm Mercedes Schlapp. We've had a great show so far, but of course, ladies, it's that time in the show when we get your final thoughts. Kimberly, let's begin with you. Thanks, Mercy. Well, America is reopening, ladies, and I couldn't be more excited by the 2.5 million beautiful American jobs added back to our economy. Americans are going back to work and living their lives, and you all know what that means for the rest of us. We're going back on the campaign trail, so I'm going to be very excited to be on the trail with all of you, and I'll be in Dallas with the president tomorrow night. We'll be seeing some great Americans that are supporting his reelection. We'll be raising money for the reelection campaign. And maybe what I'm most excited for is our amazing, amazing, and I know you guys are too, our Make America Great Again rallies. There's nothing yes. like that. Trump rally, yeah. Yes. All go. right. So I love it. It's nothing more special than that and the feeling of the energy and all the patriots, you know, the deplorables, the forgotten men and women that the left doesn't like when they show up to support our incredible president and celebrate this great nation. I'm excited. Thrilled to be a part of it. I'm proud to be an American. And I just can't wait for November when I know we will be delivering how many? Four more years for President Trump. I love it. You're Jamie. ready for the rally, Kimberly. You're totally rally ready for the rally. She's so ready go. for the feedback from the crowd. I love it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Katrina, your final thoughts. You know, I just want to say, if you have not seen the Team Trump online interview that I did with Miss Lucy, and Mustafa al Sidi, we did it last night. You can catch the replay. It's on all of our social media platforms. Um, these two own the Valentine Deli. Um, you've probably seen the video go viral on YouTube. Uh, you know, after the aftermath of the riots, you could see Miss Lucy out there sweeping up and trying to clean up. And she looks into the camera and she says, if black lives matter, what about mine? And this was her job. And she was just real emotional and heartfelt. And so we interviewed Miss Lucy and Mustafa last night. It was such a wonderful, sweet, um, inspirational, heartwarming story, uh, really that just shows who Americans really are. And so I just want to encourage everyone, if you've not seen that interview, to check it out. It was really great. Yeah, it was a remarkable show. And it just reminds you of the great spirit of America in terms mm -hmm. of you know, we're not going to give in to the mobs. We're not going to give in to the violent rioters. It's just not going to happen. And just to know that these businesses have been impacted, small businesses have been just devastated through these riots. It's just shameful, just shameful. Yeah. Laura, and you have a very special episode. I just love this American Heroes. Just walk us through what it is. Yeah, so we decided at the Trump campaign, we everybody in this country has their own unique story. And there are so many American heroes out there. That, those are people all across this country who have persevered throughout the past several months, which has been really challenging for pretty much everybody in this country. So we get their stories. And the, the really fun thing is they don't know that we're actually calling them. So John Pence, who works with us at the campaign, gets them on the phone. And then I surprise them and say hi. And usually they're really excited. Um, and, and they're just so thankful to the president for everything that he has done. So I would encourage everybody to check that out. One final thing I want to say is I'm so glad that Connecticut is on their phase two or three because I got my hair done yeah, yesterday, gorgeous. guys. <laughs> yes, it's not you happening in New York. So my guy that does my hair, John, I'm sorry. You all know how that is. You got your hair person. Please right. forgive me. I went to Connecticut yesterday. I got my hair done. And thank God, because it's been since January. Just saying. Just thank God it wasn't Eric Trump doing your hair, Laura. Oh, that could have been. oh my God. Are you crazy? No. 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 Lord, no. Our country is beginning to heal following the tragic death of George Floyd. President Trump has made it clear that justice will be served for George Floyd and that his death will not be in vain. At the same time, the president will promote equal justice under the law so that every American receives the same treatment in every encounter with law enforcement. 
together we will heal America. But we need President Trump to get reelected. To get involved, download the new groundbreaking Trump 2020 app, now available on Apple and Android. Sign up to volunteer, register for events, and win exclusive prizes. To stay in contact with us, please text TRUMP to 88022. If you or your friends, family, or neighbors want to be involved in our fight to reelect President Donald J. Trump, please visit armyfortrump.com to sign up. A huge thank you to all of you, our amazing supporters, viewers, and patriots at home who are watching. Be sure to stay tuned. Right after the show, we will be highlighting American heroes who have persevered through the difficult times our country has been facing. We will see you all next time as we continue to fight to reelect President Donald J. Trump and keep America great. God bless you and God bless America. I'm John Pence with Team Trump. Today, we'll speak with real American heroes. A mother from Macomb County, Michigan, who voted for President Obama twice, but is ready to vote Trump again in November. Another mother and business owner from Pennsylvania, who's running an essential business while homeschooling her twin children. We want to talk with them, real American heroes. Hey, Chrissy, how are you? Can you see me? I can see you. There you are. Thank you for having me. You are in Pennsylvania. You are deemed an essential business, uh, a mother as well. I am. I am a mother of four, and I have two wow. um, identical twins. Yes, I homeschool my daughter, and I'm also an ESL teacher. I teach English as a second language. That's my daughter, that's great. Matt, call me Teacher Christy. Before um, I begin, I actually wanted to invite a special guest uh, who wanted to thank you personally today. Okay. Hello. Hi, Chris. Oh my gosh. How are you? I'm so excited. I'm like, is there any way I can take a screenshot of this somehow? I wanted to say hello. I know that uh, you've been one of the fortunate ones that your business has been able to stay open right now uh, in the time of coronavirus when many of us are, are working from home. How's everything been going? It's going good. The construction projects are really just starting to to begin this weekend. I just wanted to, to say thank you for obviously supporting the president. She's eavesdropping. Zoe, 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 this is the lady. Hi. Hello. How are you? Oh. Thank you. And thank your family for everything. I don't, I feel like not only did we get a, a, a president, we got a, a whole family working. Oh, through. you're so and nice. I can't thank, thank you, you enough. A couple years ago, my daughter and I wrote a note to him saying how we love him and we're praying for him because he hears all kinds of bad stuff. And we got this back. Oh my gosh, look at that. We have to take care of our people. How are things feeling in, in Western Pennsylvania these days for the president? I think it's really good. I think that our blue state is turning red. And I have to say, as great as I thought of him in 2016, he's exceeded all my expectations. He, so grateful for him. He's done more than I think anyone thought a president could do, especially with all the resistance. No. Promises made, promises kept, right? Oh, wow, uh, we know he's the right man for the job. The uh, only man for the job. He is the only man. He did it once, he'll do it again. But again, I just wanted to, to say hello, say thank you again for being such a great supporter of our president. It was so nice to talk to you and see you and meet your daughter. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. So that's the American story, a story of two mothers who, as we fight this virus, are doing their part to beat it. It's a story of prevailing. It's a story of America. And they know that President Trump has their back. Together, we can keep America great. Until then, stay safe. You will never be forgotten again. The forgotten men and women of this country will never, ever be forgotten again.